Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about translation. So translation, the process of synthesizing proteins uh, by translating the genetic information inside a messenger RNA, or, or simply put, synthesizing proteins. So before we start talking about how translation works, we need to know some basics about amino acid structure. So as I've said in the past, we do not need to memorize the structures of amino acids for this course, but we do need to know the basic structure. So all amino acids have a basic structure. So here we have H2N is going to be linked to a carbon atom, which is linked to what we call the R group. Now the R group is going to be different for each amino acid. Everything else in the structure is going to be identical between amino acids. We have a hydrogen here. This carbon here, we're gonna call this carbon in the center here, this is going to be the alpha carbon. linked to another carbon here. In this whole group, this carbon double bonded to an oxygen, also double bonded to an oxygen of what we call a hydroxyl group. This whole group is called a carboxyl group. And this one over here, this is an amino group. Okay, so every amino acid, uh, all 20 amino acids specified by the genetic code are going to have this general structure. R group here, which is different between each amino acid, and then these atoms here. Now, what do R groups look like? So here's just a few examples. So R groups, well, the simplest one is just a hydrogen. So if there's just a hydrogen stuck here, that's the amino acid glycine. If there's a methyl group here, a methyl group is carbon with three hydrogens. If there's a methyl group there, then the amino acid is alanine. And then we can even have complicated amino acids, so complicated R groups. So there's a nitrogen double bonded to a carbon single bonded to a nitrogen, to a carbon, double bond there to another carbon, single bond there, and I think we have something like this if I didn't screw up, carbon, and then this is linked to the alpha carbon. So it, this structure right here was the R group, the amino acid would be histidine, histidine. Okay, so, you know, there are three examples, and we should have 17 other R groups to get a total of 20 amino acids, the 20 amino acids specified by the genetic code. Another thing about structure, so, so just, just briefly, if we link these together, we'll take a look at how they are linked together. But if they are linked together, and let me show them as little beads first. So imagine each of these beads is an amino acid linked together in a uh, peptide, polypeptide, or, you know, protein. I think we've talked about that in the past where peptide is, you know, up to 10 amino acids in a chain. A polypeptide is, say, 11 to 50 amino acids in a chain. And a protein would be used for the case where you have more than 50 amino acids in a chain. But, you know, I'm not very picky about what term we use. I generally just call them chains of amino acids or, or proteins. Sometimes I may use the other terms. So we have this chain of amino acids here. Now, at this very first amino acid, we should have this free amino group. So as a result, we will call this the N-terminus 
of the polypeptide, the amino acid chain. In this over here, well, we should have a free carboxyl group. So we're going to call this end the C terminus because this is a carboxyl group. So chains of amino acids, proteins, they have an N terminus and a C terminus. Now this will typically fold, right? This will fold into some, some three-dimensional structure that is important for the function of the protein. And I'll put the amino acids in here. And there are proteins that help. There are other proteins that help proteins fold and adopt the, the correct structure for function. And then we might get some bridges, uh, disulfide bridges between uh, the various parts of the chain of amino acids to give the protein its stable structure. But within the structure, okay, you sh we should be able to find the N terminus. N terminus, say, is right here, and the C terminus is here. And sometimes in these three dimensional structures, the, the ends may be buried in the center. They may not be so easy to see in a diagram or even a crystal structure of a protein. But so for this part, my, the, the, the big concept here is, you know, just like DNA has a five prime end and a three prime end, proteins have N terminal ends and C terminal ends. Now, the process, so how are amino acids linked together, say by the ribosomes? when a protein is being synthesized. So let me just focus in on two amino acids. So here's one amino acid, we won't specify, we'll just say a generic amino acid. It could be anything, it could be glycine, alanine, leucine, tyrosine, could be any, anything. Now here's the other amino acid, and say we want these, the ribosome needs to join these together while synthesizing a protein. Okay, so, so what would happen? So essentially what happens is this electrons and this nitrogen here are going to attack This carbon right here and a molecule of water will be lost in the process. So uh, this is a dehydration reaction. So let's say a water molecule comes out and we're going to now attach this nitrogen to this carbon. We're going to lose one hydrogen here. We're going to lose this hydroxyl group and one hydrogen is going to remain attached to this nitrogen. So let me diagram what that looks like. So I kept all of this part right here. Now this is lost, and now this carbon is gonna be attached to that nitrogen, and we're keeping one of the hydrogens. Okay, now I'm just putting this stuff right here, down here. Okay, so dehydration reaction to form what is called the peptide bond. Now some references say this whole thing right here, oh, I guess this is the peptide group. And some references call this the peptide bond, but that doesn't quite make sense to me because we have one, two, three, four bonds here, right? So I'm calling this, let's call this guy right here, the peptide bond. This is the bond that links together these two amino acids. Okay, so now what the ribosome could do, it could add another amino acid down here. So third amino acid, you know, is added to the C terminal end when that protein is being synthesized. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. So when ribosomes are making or synthesizing proteins, they are joining amino acids to the C terminal end of the growing amino acid chain.
Okay, so that's the, the basics for uh, amino acid structure, the peptide bond, and uh, we'll talk more about translation in the next video.